This is the smallest RTX 4090 in the world. All of that crazy gaming performance and rendering speed, all confined to this tiny water block right here. And it's for that reason that this will actually be going into my main system very, very soon. But before we do that, we need to test this thing out and see if it's actually good, which is primarily what we're gonna be doing today. Now this card is from AlphaCool. It is part of their Enterprise series, which is why it's so small in the first place and why it also doesn't have any RGB or anything like that. So imagine multiple of these, you know, in a server rack stacked together. That's mostly the goal of this water block design that we have here. Now, not only does this use one of the tiniest 4090 PCBs on the market, but having the terminals at the end of the block also saves us a bunch of space because the length of most water blocks on the market, you know, it's really not a problem. Even up to 300 millimeters, that's totally fine, even in most ITX cases. It's actually the width of the card that's the main problem, even on water blocks, believe it or not. And having the ports positioned at the end, that largely gets past that issue. Now, quick look at installation. The only graphics cards that are compatible with this block are a few from Inno3D. And here I've picked up the iChill X3, which turns out to be one of the cheaper 4090 models on the market as well. Disassembly is pretty typical. You've got a handful of screws holding the backplate to the heatsink, a few screws for the IO shield, and then four main screws around the GPU. For this particular model, you've also got three small headers for the fans and the RGB that you'll need to carefully unplug before removing everything else. I'll also mention that the thermal pads that Inno3D have used here are just extremely fragile. Like I'm sure they work fine, but they just tear apart so, so easily. Don't be expecting to reuse these if you decide to go back to air cooling for whatever reason, but I will mention just heating them up a little bit with a hairdryer can help them keep mostly intact. From there, we can clean things up a little bit with some alcohol wipes and then throw on the new thermal pads for our water block. And AlphaCool have actually pre-cut these pads, which is super nice to see. That makes installation so much easier. Really only takes us a couple minutes here. And of course, don't forget to peel back the protective film on both sides. Otherwise, you basically won't get any cooling at all. Throwing on that water block is pretty simple then. Just make sure to mount it as evenly as possible, not to over tighten anything as well, and just gradually building up that mounting pressure across the block. Then you've got the back plate with some thermal pads there as well. And there we go the world's tiniest RTX 4090. Absolutely crazy how small this thing actually is compared to the original heatsink and even the founder's edition. It is super compact. It's a very short block, just 210 millimeters in length from end to end, but you do also need to factor in the fittings at the end there too. But realistically, even with fittings, that shouldn't get in the way of any builds. One pretty important note though, with these fittings, you will need some pretty narrow ones for these two ports. Uh, to give you an idea, the thick EK torque fittings aren't an option, but their classic fittings or micro fittings will be totally fine. I'll also mention that being a true single slot card, it does open up a bit more possibility for radiator and fan mounting, depending on where you're going to be installing it, or simply just a bit more breathing room. As for the total width of the card, uh, you're looking at about 150 millimeters from the bottom of the PCB to the top of the power connectors. I've used a custom cable here from Mod DIY, which is extremely flexible and does save us realistically at least 70 millimeters versus that massive default 16 pin adapter. Now as a bit of a comparison, EK also do make a very similar product to what we have here from AlphaCool. It's kind of a single slot enterprise GPU water block with the ports at the end. However, that one is 60 millimeters longer than this one and 12 millimeters wider. So still definitely a small card, but it just goes to show how small this AlphaCool block actually is. Now the thermal performance, of course, uh, mostly depends on what you're gonna be hooking this up to and other factors like what the case is and what your ambient temperature is and stuff like that. Fan speed of course is a primary variable there too but with a 450 watt tdp you are looking at a lot of heat load even compared to a 3090 that's plus 100 watts you know up to most of the time you're looking at around 400 you know potentially around 380 390 so one little marker that you could use i guess if you're familiar with a 3090 loop or maybe if you have a 3090 in your system at the moment i think adding a few degrees on top of that would be a pretty safe bet so what i've done here is hook it up to a single 280 mil rad on an open test bench fan set to 1600 RPM. And yeah, thermals are about what I expected. To be honest, this is more of a mental sanity check than anything. I just wanted to make sure that the GPU hotspot and the memory temp were within a safe delta of the average GPU temp. And thankfully, that's exactly what we see. Very small range between those three temperature values. So here in Fermark, the GPU sits at around 57C with the ambient room temp at 23. But in most gaming scenarios, as I mentioned, you'll see lower power draw and therefore lower temperatures as well by a few degrees. 
Again, your mileage will vary dramatically depending on what case you're installing it in, the amount of radiator volume you have, the fan speeds, the ambient temperature, but for what it's worth, the overall thermal performance here, it's within striking distance of the hybrid 4090 Supreme Liquid X from MSI. That is to say that the thermals for the Alpha Cool Block are about what I expected. Temps below 60C here on a single rad are pretty decent for a 400 watt plus GPU, even if it is on an open bench. So although you probably could get away with a single rad setup if your case has pretty decent airflow, I'd realistically recommend a dual radiator setup. The ultimate test though is going to be installing it into my main system here. Now I don't have all the parts for that just yet and to be honest I've kind of been delaying it because since I built this I've been really enjoying it. Everything just fits so nicely, it runs really well and so I've been kind of delaying water cooling it uh, if I'm honest but it is something that I am really looking forward to doing because I really do want to see if a water cooling setup in this case is superior to the all air cooled configuration that we have in there at the moment. And I mean, here's a look at just how small this 4090 block is compared to the FE card that's in there currently. It's so small that it will allow me to install two 240 mil rads in this case, as well as a powerful DDC pump. I guess the objective with this build is to keep playing around with it and optimizing the thermal and noise performance as much as I can. And really this water block, it's the only one on the market which will allow me to test it water cooled setup in this case with the extra space that I need. But that's pretty much it. Hopefully you all enjoyed this one fun little test drive of this tiny alpha cool water block, uh, the tiniest 4090 in the world, which we'll be using very, very soon. If you want to pick it up, seems like the performance is, you know, pretty good. Doesn't seem like there's a compromise despite the really tiny form factor. And of course, I'll leave it linked down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.